we also equate it to 10 to the power kcl or i by i naught if we invert these terms then it will be transmittance means the intensity of the final radiation to the initial radiation is also called as transmittance is equal to 10 to the power minus kcl now moving a bit ahead if we observe a graph between absorbance and concentration so you can see a straight line between both of them so it means absorbance is directly proportional to concentration similarly if we plot on y-axis the transmittance and on the x-axis the concentration you will see a rectangular hyperbola which shows that transmittance and concentration are inversely related to each other we can also observe from these graph that with increase in concentration the absorbance also increase linearly and with increase in concentration that transmittance decrease exponentially and the instrument for spectrophotometry now we will be studying so we have a source light source which is a stable radiant energy source then we have a monochromator monochromator basically used to convert the light into a monochromatic light which is a single wavelength light then we have a photo detector finally we have a uh, measurable absorbance so we have the following part in respect of photometer light or radiation energy source then we have a monochromator monochromator basically act as a wavelength selector to isolate the desired wavelength from the source of radiation then we have a transparent container which is called a square cubit could be made up of could be made up of quartz or silica then we have detector or radiant detector which is sort of photo tube which convert radiation energy into measurable signals which are shown on the monitor so cubit it must be fabricated from the material which is transparent radiation in spectral region of the interest it made up of quartz so whenever we have to do spectrophotometry for uv radiation we generally use quartz qs because glass absorb ultraviolet radiation so that's why in case of ultraviolet radiation we use quartz cubit or few silica and silicate glass for visible light and the calculations are done according to the equation that y is equal to mx plus c where m is the slope and x is the concentration and then we have c as intercept so x can be calculated like y minus c by m which are the topic of detailed discussion so to quantify we prepare a series of standard solution of certain given substance let us suppose km and the four concentration and treat them in the same manner as the sample is treated so the set spectrophotometer at a fixed wavelength like lambda max therefore measures light of absorbance standards then we put the standard curve between the absorbance and concentration it's like we make a standard solution and we take the absorbance of different concentration of standard then we take the test solution and then we take the absorbance and then we put up a line and drop a perpendicular and it can be equated like absorbance of standard is equal to concentration of standard divided by absorbance of test divided by concentration of test in this manner the unknown quantity can be calculated so where we use this spectrophotometry so it is mainly used for determination of anions like sulfate nitrate phosphate fluoride ion and few of the cations like ammonium ion chromium 6 plus which is hexavalent chromium dyes and few of the pesticide so here we can see that flame photometry especially used for the elements like lithium sodium potassium and fluorimetry is specifically used for beryllium now we will be talking something about atomic absorption spectroscopy or spectrophotometry or atomic absorption spectrophotometer so as you can see in the picture we have a hollow cathode lamp where we have an argon as an inert gas in the hollow cathode tube then we have a burner then flame with the atomic bead so uh, this type of AS could be of two variety either it could be a flame AS or double AS so flame atomic absorption spectrophotometer or graphite furnace depends upon the source of flame like we can use either 
flame using some fuel or graphite furnace tubes. Then we have a few layer mixture. We have atomizer, nebulizer which is used for injecting the samples and then we have a monochromator followed by a detector. It is the most popular method. The AAAS is the most popular method of estimating trace elements, heavy metals in environmental samples. It is very simple, sensitive method. It measures approximately 70 elements. So we need to know the principle of AAAS. So it is basically based on the measurement of decrease in light intensity from the source or what you call as hollow cathode lamp when it passes through the vapor layer of atom of samples. So hollow cathode lamp is nothing. It consists of a glass tube containing glass tube which contains a noble gas, something like argon ion at 7 mm of pressure inside which coated with the metal to be analyzed means we will take a hollow cathode lamp of the same metal which is being analyzed by double AS like for chromium we will take a chromium lamp for iron we will take a iron lamp in hollow cathode lamp for uh, mercury we take a mercury lamp for strontium we take a strontium lamp as well when high potential difference is applied electric energy flow through the lamp then argon ion which is there as an argon plus is produced inside the tube with very high energy which leads to sputtering of metals from cathode surface when sample is injected through the nebulizer it converts it into the vapor phase the vaporized atom absorbs the coming electronic coming electromagnetic radiations from the cathode lamp and this lamp will be of the same element the element which we are analyzing the decrease in radi radiation energy passes through the monochromator through the detector and recorder so this was all about flame AS we have another variety of atomic absorption spectrophotometer which is graphite furnace AS it is much more efficient atomizer having much more efficient atomizer than a flame and it can directly absorb small quantity of sample it also produces reducing environment Sorry. for easily oxidizable elements and where this flame where this graphite furnace atomic absorption spectrophotometer is, is mainly used for heavy metals like cadmium cobalt chromium copper lead major heavy metals like iron manganese zinc these are done by air gases really in my flame atomic absorption spectrophotometer so if anyone wants to refer the details they can refer to environmental chemistry by manhan it is very nicely explained there the spectrophotometry so determination of aluminium barium beryllium silicon vanadium can also be determined by using flame atomic absorption spectrophotometer where we use flame as a burning thing and the source of fuel is like N2O nitrous oxide or acetylene flame. So this was something about AS. So as we have mentioned in our literature that spectrophotometry is basically a technique used for quantitation of the biomolecules using biological samples. So whenever we use biological sample we call it as a spectrophotometry. Spectrophotometry when performed in visible light it is also called as colorimetry because the development of the color is used as a criteria for absorption based on the color intensity means they are able to absorb at certain wavelength which is called as lambda max. So as a general observation we have seen that protein show absorption at 280 nanometer in UV range due to the presence of aromatic amino acids such as phenylalanine, tyrosine and tryptophan while DNA show color at 260 nanometer in the UV range so this needs to be kept in mind that protein show maximum absorption in the UV range at 280 nanometer while DNA show at 260 nanometer and spectrophotometry is basically based on two law the first one was Lambert law and the one is a beer law so here we you can see acuate which is having length L. Sorry. 
and having a substance whose concentration of the substance to be measured as C. Then we have I naught, which is the intensity of incident light. Then we have I, which is intensity of the transmitted light. So let us see what do you mean by Lambert's law. So as a general rule, keeping in these assumptions. So whenever a ray of monochromatic light passes through an absorbing media, its intensity decreases exponentially as the length of absorbing media increase. So as the length of the absorbing media increase, then the intensity of the light decreases exponentially. So mathematically, the expression could be written for Lambert law is like I, which is the intensity of transmitted radiations, is equal to I naught, which is the incident light or incident radiation into or multiply with e raised to the power minus kl where k is the molar extension coefficient and l is the path length of the qubit let's come on beer's law now so similarly beer's law can be stated like like when a ray of monochromatic light passes through an absorbing media its intensity decreases exponentially as concentration of absorbing media increase so mathematically it could be written as i is equal to i naught where I is the transmitted light, I know is the incident light into E raised to the power minus Kc where K is the molar extension coefficient and C is concentration of the substance. So while we combine both of them, so we get a final equation which is called as lambert beer law and here the mathematical expression will be I is equal to I know E to the power minus Kcl. So when we rearrange and solve it, so it could be written as like I by I naught is equal to E to the power minus KCL and finally I naught by I is equal to E to the power KCL. So this taking log on both sides. So we see that log of I naught by I is equal to KCL and this term log of I naught by I is refers to as absorbance or A or optical density or OD. So a absorbance is equal to log of I naught by I which is equal to KCL. This formula is very important specifically for the numerical being continuously asked in UGC exams. So absorbance is equal to KCL where A is equal to absorbance or optical density and sometimes it is also called as OD. So here you can see that absorbance is equal to KCL where K is a constant and L is equal to one centimeter if we take and we can see that absorbance is directly proportional to concentration which was the statement of Peer's law. So if we draw a diagram taking absorbance on y-axis and concentration on x-axis so you can see a straight line means absorbance is directly proportional to concentration. So there is another term which is called as transmittance or percentage transmittance. So percentage transmittance is nothing but I by I naught means intensity of transmitted radiation to that of the incident radiation into 100. So final light intensity divided by initial light intensity into 100 is transmittance. So if we solve this then T upon 100 is equal to I by I naught and if we inverse on both the side then 100 upon T is equal to I naught by I and log of I naught by I as all of you know is absorbance and taking log both the sides log of i naught by i is equal to log 100 by t so log of i naught by i is equal to 2 minus log t and log of i naught by i is equal to absorbance so absorbance is equal to 2 minus log t where t is transmittance so we can observe from this equation that absorbance is equal to 2 minus log t and if the percentage transmittance is 100 percent then the absorbance will be zero right and if we take that percentage transmittance is zero then absorbance is infinite and you can see that here the absorbance and transmittance are inversely proportional so when you draw a diagram between taking percentage transmittance on x-axis and absorbance on x-axis or concentration they are inversely proportional to each other then we have specificity a specific substance absorb maximally at a specific wavelength so not affected by the presence of other molecules means contaminant so this lambda max help in this 
Then we have a term called sensitivity. By diluting the given sample, we can make changes. And one more fact about the spectrophotometry that for visible light, we use in the tungsten lamp, invisible spectrophotometer. And for 